Praise God. Take your Bibles this morning. Go to Luke chapter 17. You should be aware if you're in this church or part of this church and understand that there are adjustments being made in the world today, and those adjustments basically are in you individually. God is making adjustments in me, making adjustments in you. If you've been around here, been around the Word, been around the Holy Ghost, God is changing the way that you think about certain things and expanding your thought life so that He can get more power into the earth and more authority into the earth for what's going to take place and is taking place right now, basically. Let me give you an example. The Lord showed me this morning when I got up. There was a while back when in our garage, it had one light bulb, and it was one of those old fluorescent lights. And sometimes you'd go out in the garage, you turn the light on. Sometimes it flickered and went on. Sometimes it just flickered, and sometimes it didn't go on. <laughs> so, of course, we don't do much out there, but once we got busy, we had to do laundry at night. Of course, when you go out at night, you throw the switch, and it comes half on. <laughs> How many you know that's better than not on at all? Yeah. So we, we, we go, you know, we got to do something out here. There's no light. Mine was, do the laundry during the day. There's plenty of light. <laughs> Quick thinker. But since my skills are not that great with light bulbs or any kind of electrical stuff, we basically just left it go. And the more we left it go, how many know the less it came on? So basically we put up with it, basically walking around the garage in darkness or part darkness for a long time rather than just allowing the light to come in and make it easier for us. And we went up, I think it was last year, we went up to Josh's, and on the way back we got here, I opened up the garage, and the entire ceiling of the garage fell in. Oh. With the light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I had to get someone in there to put the ceiling back up. And a brand new, nice light bulb in there. Boy, that thing's nice and bright right now. And my point being, in your life... In your life, you have some dark areas that you've put up with for a long time. And maybe there's a little flicker of light there every now and then. And you're saying, oh, I'm going to fix it someday. Someday I'm going to fix that light bulb. So we can go out and deal with it. Someday I'm going to let the light in and take care of this. But don't wait until your ceiling falls in. See, if you're not plugged into God, you better get plugged into God right now. Amen. If you're not hooked to the Holy Ghost, you better get hooked to the Holy there Ghost. You go. We always say, playing time in church is over. Playing time in church has been over for yes, years. But is it over in your life, see? Are you willing to make the adjustments and believe what this book says and step into a higher realm before the roof falls in, praise yeah. God? Yeah. And that's what we want to do. We want to continually change through the Word of God and the Spirit of God. I want to continue to change every day of my life. How to handle situations even better. How to, how to deal with things even better. I want to be able, and I think I'm better at doing that than I was the light bulb. Yeah. So praise God. All right. Luke chapter 17. Look at verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, Jesus answered and said, The kingdom of God comes not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is where? Within you. Notice here it talks about the kingdom of God being where? In, In us. So you can't think of the kingdom of God as this big sphere out there someplace. The kingdom of God is actually a spiritual kingdom that is now on the inside of you that brought with it everything from the kingdom that has in it. Are you following me? All the authority of the kingdom, all the power of the kingdom, the day that you were made, we studied a long time ago, even before you were in your mother's womb, God created you and equipped you to do something in this day and in this hour. So the kingdom of God is on the inside of you, and everywhere you go, the kingdom of God goes. Amen. Because you are the kingdom of God. People are saying, God's going to move. God's going to move when you move. Amen. There's a move of God coming. Why? Are you going to do something finally? <laughs> You see, we've got all these cliches and who's and I've been hearing that for 40 years, praise God. You know, God's going to move, God's going to move. Same people, God's going to move. Well, if he hasn't moved in your life in 40 years, then you probably had a pretty sad life up to this point. God's always moving, but he wants to move on the inside of each and every one of us. So the kingdom of God basically is what he created man to do was to reinstate that kingdom into the earth. Basically, man was created with a kingdom. How many know at the beginning, Adam had the Holy Ghost. Adam had everything he needed. Adam had authority and power. But when he rebelled against the government of God, he lost all that. Amen. So what did Jesus do? He came to restore man back to their original place. You go back to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. That's you. Yeah. 
You were created in God's image, likeness, and given dominion. Say dominion. dominion. Say rulership. rulership. Say authority, authority. Over, the earth. over the earth. So he had to restate, reinstate man back to that position, which he did. How many did he did a good job? Yes. Praise yeah. God. So we've been put back in that position. Yeah. Now, what does he have to do to get the kingdom extended, get it spread, allow his government to rule in this earth? He has to, first of all, allow the kingdom to penetrate you. Amen. That's right. See, God has a standard of morals. Boy, that made him quiet. Yeah. Yeah. God has a standard of culture, yeah. things that he does. Just like in heaven, praise God, yeah. is the ability on the inside to do you things. That's why we cannot compromise with what the world's telling us. That's right. yeah. We have to go to this book and find out what he's already stated. Because right. once the king makes a statement, it's law. He doesn't throw a statement out there to get your opinion. That's right. He doesn't throw one out there to see what you think about it. He sticks it out there, and as soon as he says it, praise God, it's law. So what do we want to do? We want to be in the kingdom of God. We want to be under the king. So we're going to obey what he says in the word of God, and we're going to follow in the word of God what he says. Therefore, we are going to grow in love. We're going to start just not loving those nice people around us. We're going to have to get to the place where we love unconditionally people who we can't stand. Are you following me? Yeah. And I'll tell you, you can adjust this. You can, you can do this. You can pray for people. You, you can follow God's word. And pretty soon your soul man, say soul man. Soul, soul man. Hallelujah. Soul. Surprised nobody started singing. I'm a soul man. You're all thinking it. Nobody can step out. I know. Nobody steps in front of it. But your mind, will, and emotions, the Bible says, can be trained. That even your senses will want to love people that don't like you. Your senses don't want to make you forgive people, basically, yeah. who don't deserve to be forgiven. Yeah. So we're growing in this. We're doing it. And the kingdom of God is on the inside of us. And it's in our bones. And it's in our skin. It's in every single part of us. this kingdom is. And it's culture and it's nature. You have God's nature on the inside of you. So there's no reason why you can't live in God's nature Amen. unless you deny the nature that you have and believe you have the old nature. That's right. Okay. See, you'll be whatever you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we sing that song, I know who I am. Yeah. But the question is, do you? Yeah. See, if you haven't been in the book, you don't know who you are. Amen. You think you know who you are. Yeah, right. And thinking you know who you are probably is not right because you got your information from somewhere else. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what mommy told me. Well, mommy was wrong. Right. Spare the rod, spoil your child. The Bible doesn't say that. Sorry. Spare the rod, hate your child, the Bible says. And I'm gonna, I love my kids. Come on, and what do they want to do? You spank somebody in a shopping center and they want to throw you in jail for obeying your king and standing yeah, in your kingdom for God's right. sake. It's ridiculous. So you got to make up your mind right now. What am I going to do? Am I going to continue to listen to the world and continue to watch things on TV and continue to see things that take me away from the morals of God, from the culture of God, from the lifestyle of God? Or are we going to live under the king and act like the king yeah. and do the things the king wants us to do? Yeah. And that's where the kingdom of God. And you've got the greatest teacher on the inside of you yeah. this morning. Yeah. Some of you thought I was, but no, he is. <laughs> It's the Holy Ghost, praise God, it's on the inside of you. And he will teach you all the time, and that still small voice will show you, he'll correct you, he'll show you how, he'll lead and guide you into all truth. Yes. He doesn't lead you into a car wreck, he doesn't lead yeah, you into right. struggles, he yeah. doesn't lead you into trials, yeah. he leads you into the truth to bring you out of your troubles and all that stuff. Are you yeah. following me? Yeah. Yeah. So he's there to lead and guide me into all truth. Why? Because if I know the truth, I'll be free. free. If I be set free with the kingdom, then I can set other people free. It's hard to set people free when you're bound. Right. right. That's why the church gets in trouble because for two hours on Sunday, they're the holiest people you've ever seen in your life. And then they leave and all once they change, they're like an unsuperman. They go in the phone booth and rip off their holiness and their righteousness, their peace and their joy. Then they go out in the world and tear people up. And then they finally convince somebody to go to church with them. And they take him to church, and you're going, Ooh, Lord Jesus. They're going, who is this clown? I've seen him at work, man. They don't act like that at work. Not at all. See, you can be a part-time Christian, but you can't be a part-time citizen. Amen! Hallelujah! You're a citizen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No matter who's watching, no matter who's not watching, no matter who cares. 
doesn't make any difference, see? It doesn't matter if pastor is close. Because <laughs> God is close. Right. And God's not there to bust you when you make a mistake. He's there to correct you, to keep you under his righteousness and right standing so that you can operate in the things of God and fulfill your purpose. All he's interested in is extending his kingdom through you, and he wants to do that whatever it takes to get you there. When you make a mistake, don't beat yourself up. Right, right. Yeah. Don't do it. Oh, I failed, I failed. Oh, yeah, we all do. Praise God, just repent. Move on, praise God. Because God's not worried about that, glory to God. He wants you to fulfill whatever he's done. So the kingdom of God is basically coming. When Jesus came and said the kingdom of God is now here, that was the, the start of the decline of satanic rule in the earth realm. Until that time, Satan was controlling everything. Satan was in charge. But then Jesus showed up and said, man, there's a new shepherd. Yeah. 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 My guns are loaded, praise oh, God. Woo. We're going to change this western town one by one, yeah. glory to God. And we're going to make a difference, hallelujah. Yeah. And then he wanted to announce to everybody, the kingdom of God is at hand, praise yeah. God. Yeah. Things are changing right now. There's a heavenly kingdom and a heavenly government coming back into this earth realm. Finally, yeah. praise God. Yeah. How many know that man's tried governments? Yeah. Continues to try governments. Yeah. How many know they're all failing? Yeah. Some are better than others. Some go a little bit longer, but they're all going to fall apart because man cannot give godly kingdom. Only kingdom can come from a spiritual realm, Amen. which is heaven. Let me just go a little further. You're not from earth. Right. Right. That's right. You're in the earth, but you're not from earth. Amen. You're from heaven. You were sent here to do a job, praise yeah. God. And when you're done and die, you're going to go back up to heaven. Yeah. And then when it's all over with, you're going to come back down to earth. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I can't wait to live with Jesus in heaven forever. Well, forget it. It's not going to happen. That's right. You were put here, and God's not going to change his purpose. He's not going to change his plan. He created man to rule and reign on this earth. And that's where you're going to end up sooner or later. Yeah. Right, right back down here. Glory yeah. God. That's where it's at. Hallelujah. All right, go to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7, look at verse 19. And John, calling unto two of his disciples, said them to Jesus, saying, Are you he that should come, or should we look for another? When the men come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you he that should come, or should we look for another? And in that same hour, Jesus cured many of their infirmities and plagues and evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. The dead are raised to the poor, the gospel is preached, and blessed is he whoever shall not be offended. Hallelujah. Amen. So here come the disciples. <laughs> Jesus. Hallelujah. But his disciples, basically, how many know John was in prison? Yeah. How many know whenever you run into a problem, you wonder where God is and if he's really aware of what's going on? Yeah. So we can't fault John. But John said, is he the one to come or is there another person? And they basically went and Jesus didn't say, yes, I'm him. He said, no, the blind see, the deaf hear, dead are raised, blah, 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 blah. What was he saying? He's saying, I'm proving to you that the kingdom is here. I'm not just going to tell you it's here. I'm going to prove to you it's here. Now, what was the proof of the kingdom of God? Was it Jesus' diploma on the wall for an associate's degree in Bible theology? No. No. Was it a picture of Jesus hanging there on the cross in his office? No. No. It was power that made the blind see, the deaf hear. Are you following me? So he said the kingdom basically is a kingdom of power. And by explaining that, he said there's a shift in the power in the earth right now. In other words, Satan at this time was running free, doing whatever he wanted to do. Then he started to run into Jesus, who had the anointing of God on the inside of him. And immediately, the decline of satanic rule started to shift. Immediately, there was an invasion of the Spirit of God into the earth realm once again. And he started overruling all Satan's work that he was doing. Satan would make somebody blind, Jesus would heal him. Uh -huh. Satan would kill somebody, Jesus raised him from the dead. They say, what's the matter with you? Kingdom of God is here. Yeah. How you do this? Kingdom of God is here. Right. Now, we know the kingdom of God is where? 
Yes. It's on the inside of us. Yes. So basically what he was doing was not only ushering in the kingdom of God and the government of God, but he was demonstrating to the future people yes. who would come into the kingdom of God what they can do oh, wow. once they get in the kingdom of God. Awesome. Hallelujah. All right, go to Luke chapter 9. Look at Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to do what? He sent them to do what? What did he send them to do? And preach and heal the sick. Say heal the sick. Say he sent them to heal the sick. Now if he sent them to heal the sick, that must mean that they had the ability to heal the sick or he never would have sent them to heal the sick. Are you following me? Yeah. See, the church has been in this thing where all I got to do is pray right, do something right, and hopefully God will see me and heal them. And God never said he would heal them. He said he already healed them. He told you to go and you heal the sick. Are you following me? Yes. Well, I can't heal the sick. Only God can do that. Then why did he no. tell you to go heal the sick? Why would he tell you that? Why did he say, go heal the sick, but let me warn you, you can't. Oh. Yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. can't do it. See, what we've done is we separated the call of the church, basically. We do the preaching. We do the praying in tongues. But God does the healing and the casting out of devils. Now. But they're all in the same verse. Yeah. See, but it's only for those that believe. Yeah. Yeah. And these signs shall follow them that believe. believe. See, they don't follow God, they follow us. Yeah. There's power on the inside of you that you're not aware that you've got. Amen. There's an anointing on the inside of you that you just don't understand what's already on the inside of you. Yeah. The kingdom of God is on the inside of you. Okay. And you have ability to heal the sick. You have the ability to yeah. cast out devils. Yeah. You have the ability to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Somebody yeah. shoot yeah. Now, did you pray and ask God to pray in tongues? No. Because God has given us authority in a building. Why? He wants us to be in charge down here. Yes. He desires his kids to run his business yes. down here. Praise God. Hallelujah. So here he does. Go to another one. Go to, go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. In verse 7, he says, And as you go, preach. Now, who's supposed to preach? Yeah. Yeah. Saying, The kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick. Who's supposed to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Cleanse the lepers. Who's supposed to do that? Yeah. Raise the dead. Who's supposed to do that? Yeah. Cast out devils. Who's supposed to do that? Yeah. Notice, freely you have. Receive. Now freely. Yeah. So apparently I received something, right? Yeah. I mean, I've got something here, and I want to learn to use that. But in order for me to use it more effectively than ever, I have to believe that I have something. Yes. Yeah. Remember in Acts when, when the crippled person was right before the gate beautiful? Yeah. They came up and says, such as I have, I give. Yeah. See, the church still doesn't think it has anything. They think it's all up to God. They think when God feels like moving, he'll move. If he feels like doing something, he'll do something. Every now and then, he, and, that, and then it comes doctrine out of that. Well, God heals some, but God doesn't want to heal others. Well, God saves some. See, we get all these doctrines out of failure. But let me tell you, anything you're failing on in your life, it's not God's fault. Amen. See? Yeah. Whatever, whatever you're failing in, it's, it's not God. That's it's right. you somewhere along the line. Yes. So what do I want to do? I want to learn how to not fail. Yes. I want to learn how to change the light bulb yes. before my roof falls in. <laughs> how many know it was possible yeah. for me to figure out how to take that old fluorescent light out of there and put a new one in? But you got to twist it and turn it and do all this stuff. And that took time to learn. Yeah. And most of the church ain't got time to learn anything. Too busy living life and praising the Lord. <laughs> but see, we learn these things. Except that the Spirit of God's on the inside of you. He's to show you what you have, what belongs to you, yes. what it is. And it's your job to heal the sick. Notice what else here. It says, cleanse the lepers. Amen. It doesn't say run from the lepers. Uh -oh. It doesn't say stay six feet apart from the lepers. It doesn't say wear a leprosy mask. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Don't get sorry. Because if you think this is going to be it, it's not. 
There's going to be other things coming. And how we act, react to we've, we've had some training now. Right. Have we not? Yeah. We've had some. We've been in this, and we were this way, then we were over here, then we're over here, then we're over here. But the next one, we're going to be stable. Yeah. yeah. We're going to know who we are, where we belong, what we're called to do, what we're supposed to do, what we're not supposed to do. And we're going to do it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Because people are going to need it. Yeah. And we're the answer. Praise yeah. God. You're the answer to people's problems around you. Praise yes. God. Your job, heal the sick. Your job, cast out devils. Yes, right. Your job, cleanse the lepers. Yes. Your job, raise the dead. Yes, come on. Now, you can't tell me your mind's raising the dead mind. Oh, right. See? Right. Apparently, Smith Wigglesworth knew it. Yes. And he believed it. Yes. Praise God. And they did it in a way that could only be by the Holy Ghost because nobody in their right mind would ever do what these people did. <laughs> Imagine picking up a dead man off the floor and slamming him against the wall. <laughs> Letting him go. He fell back down, picking him up, slamming him against the wall again. My God, you'd be in jail before the second slam. Amen. Of course, it'd be hard to kill him. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way they, they operated the Holy Ghost. And they believed that they had power. Yes. And by agreement with the Holy Ghost of what That's they wanted right. to do, it released yeah. that power That's on right. the inside of them. It didn't make sense. Oh. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, we got to come out of the sense realm. Right. Yeah. We got to come out of the natural thinking, the natural way things are operated, the natural yeah. things are doing. And we got to get in the Holy Ghost every now and then to follow what He wants you to do. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And He will tell you what He wants to do. Yeah. And if you're, you know, we sang this morning, if He goes to the left, we go to the oh, left. If He goes to the right, I go to the right. If He goes to the left, That's I go to the right. left. Until you go to the left and right, you'll never go forward. <laughs> You go to the left. I ain't going to the left. I don't feel like going to the left today. This is not a left day. This is a right day. And I refuse. I don't think you know what you're talking about, Lord. Well, you're never going to go forward, you understand, until you can at least go left when he says left. And right when he says right. Until you can follow something he's saying on the inside of you. Then he'll take you forward to the next step. Praise God. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to up our thinking. He's trying to get us to think. Praise yes. God. And why is the kingdom of God in us? Because the king's in us. Yes. Woo. Come on. We've already learned about the mystery. Yeah. I don't know when we talk about that. Whether it's Wendy or Sunday. But th there's a mystery. And that mystery is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Praise God. Woo. See? The king lives in you. That's why the kingdom is on the inside of you. That's why you have power. That's why you have wisdom. That's why you have all this stuff. You've got the nature of God on the inside of you. You've got the power of God on the inside of you. And if you study this stuff and meditate on it, even when you really don't believe it, sometimes it will slip out your mouth. And it'll slide out your mouth. You'll say, my God, who said that? <laughs> I remember we were at a charismatic prayer meeting one time and people were coming up and I was studying this stuff and I was all fired up and I preached that night and they were coming up for healing afterwards and some lady came up to me and I just, I don't know why I said I just said, do you believe I'm able to heal you? And she said, no, I believe Jesus is. And I said, go get Jesus' prayer line. And I walked away from her and I thought, oh my God. But when I thought about it, it made her think. Yeah. You know, she didn't believe she was going to get healed, I guess, unless Jesus appeared behind me or something like that. But notice, at that time, I was starting to believe that I had the ability Amen. of God on the inside of me. Right. And in a high tense situation where the Holy Ghost took over, it came out my mouth. You see? Oh, I would never premeditate to say that. Right. You see, but it was important, praise God. Why is that? Because we've got to come to the place where we start understanding who we are and what we really have on the inside of us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's like if I was God and I wanted to do some woodwork and I'd give a, a carpenter my hammer. I mean, you know, he's got the hammer. He's got the knowledge of what to do. I just gave him the ability to do it. And if he comes and says, build the thing, I ain't going to build the thing. You understand? I ain't going to pound the nail. I ain't going to do this. Why? I already gave the hammer. So he has already given us the hammer. Are you following yes. me? And we're building the kingdom of God down here. Yeah. We're doing it person at a time, thought at a time, relationship at a time. Yeah. We're building the kingdom of God little by little. But God's not the one doing it anymore. He's equipped you to do. That's right. Yeah. He's given you the hammer. He's given you light bulb knowledge, praise God. Yeah. And now we've got an opportunity to do that in our lives. But he has to convince us. You understand? Yeah. He has to convince of us who we are and what we can do and how we can do it. Praise God. Go to 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm stepping on some religious cows this morning, but that's all right. Praise God. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'll tell you another thing. You can't preach this stuff in other churches. Because the board could easily get rid of you. Or the head could get rid of you. But since I'm the head here, I'm not going to get rid of me. Come on. And that's another problem. Should we go there? Yes. Churches shouldn't be ran by boards. They should be ran by a pastor who, under the anointing of God, has a vision to run the church. They bring in counsel. They help him. They talk to him. They do whatever they need to do. But they don't run the church. They don't have the vision. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Turn that turn that TV off, praise God. <laughs> no, this needs to be saved. This needs to get out. That's the problem. This needs to get out. Yeah, preach. All right, Second Peter. Where am I now? Chapter one. Look at verse three. According as His divine power has given unto us. How many things? All. How many? All. How many? All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. When you became a new creation in Christ Jesus, you entered the kingdom of God. All these things were given to you. you that You already have them. You're not yeah. trying to get them. Religion will tell you what to do to get these things. The kingdom tells you you already got them. Yeah. Religion will tell you, just keep working to get to heaven. That's what you do your whole life after you get saved and work to get to heaven. Heaven is part of the kingdom of God that you stepped into. Amen. It's a benefit of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Righteousness is a benefit. Power is yeah. a benefit. All these things came with you when you entered the kingdom of God. It's just like any other country. When you become a United States citizen, how many know you got rights in the United States? Yeah. Whatever those rights are, you didn't earn them, you didn't buy them, you didn't pay for them. You simply became a citizen of that country. Yeah. When you become a citizen of the kingdom of God, all the benefits of that kingdom as long as you obey the speed limit <laughs> you know what I mean as long as you stay in righteousness with the kingdom of God you have rights if you don't how many know you go to jail and then you lose your rights for a while praise God so that's why we're walking in righteousness of God we've got we've got stuff through the kingdom of God we've got privileges that are there. What are your privilege? You have the privilege to heal the sick. You have yes. a privilege to yes. cast out devils. Yes. You have a privilege to talk in your heavenly language. Whenever yes. you feel like talking in your heavenly language, to build yourself up. All these are privileges. But notice it says he has given you all things. Say all things. All things. That means you have God's nature. You have everything that you will ever need. When, when I came into the church and, and basically I came out of a denomination and I got all excited and I went to a full gospel church. But when I went there, I heard a bunch of stuff that I found out later probably wasn't even the truth. The first thing I did was I spent hours praying to be more like God. Lord, make me more like you. Make me more like you. I just want to be more like you. Give me a clean heart. Make me more like you. And then I started reading in the Bible that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus in the image and likeness of God. And I was already made yes. there. But you see, if I could do something to get there, then I could pat me. But if Jesus provided, I know Pat. See, it's by the blood of Jesus. How did you get that way, Grace? Grace, he paid for it, praise God. Well, what do you have to do to get that way? Believe. Believe, praise God, that it is given you. Basically, I spend half the time on my knees asking God to send the power. Send the power, 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 send And every church I went to, send the power, the power's coming down, Holy Ghost coming, send it down. And all that time, you know, I didn't think I had any power. Right. Because I didn't feel in send it. Yeah. And I don't know why he wasn't sending it. I guess he didn't want me to have it. So he didn't send it. Didn't put a Holy Ghost stamp on it and send it to me, praise God. So I didn't. So I spent all my time doing that. Most of the stuff I was doing was basically a waste of time. Most of the time I was depending on God in heaven to do what He told me to do. Yes. 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 And when you're a baby Christian, that will work for you for a while. But you're supposed to grow up some. You're supposed to grow in the wisdom and knowledge of God and what's supposed to be done and what's not supposed to be done. Praise God. I found out a lot of things that were in my life that I was praying and begging God to get out that I had the power to blow out of my life all the time. And nobody ever told me. Amen. Come on. We just trust God. Trust God with that symptom. Maybe he's teaching you something through that symptom. He's drawing you closer to him. Closer to him. Go to the doctor. Why? If he's drawing me closer, I might as well remain sick. All right. Make up your mind. 
You see, I didn't know I had authority. Yeah. I didn't know my kids could walk in divine health. Amen. I didn't know when I walked up to them and put my hand on their forehead and I said, you get off my Ooh, kid in the name of Jesus yeah. and you stay off that the devil would run. Nobody ever taught me that. Amen. See, I was ill-informed, uninformed, didn't know what I was doing. But when the Holy Ghost starts teaching you and starts showing you, you're going to find out there's things in your life today that you're putting up with that you could blast out of your life just like that. Yeah. If you simply knew who you were and used your authority. Amen. Come on. Hey, God is a good God. If it's not good, it's not God. Oh, right. I wonder if that's from God. Is it good? If it's not, no. Get rid of it, praise God. Stand against it. Use your authority against it. Use the power of God on the inside of you and get over it, praise God. You're the temple of God on the inside of you. He expects you. And everything he's done, he covered himself because he's already did it. He has given you. Say, has given. Has given. Remember the Israelites? God comes to them and says, I have given you the promised land. What's so hard about that? He's already given it to them. But they had to go inspect to see if they could get it or not. But why do you want to get something he already gave to you? And, of course, ten of them come back and say, oh, my God, there's giants over there. We're all going to die. <laughs> and two of them came back with the Holy Ghost and said, man, there's some fruit and some stuff over there. Praise God. We need to get in there and do this. Man. <laughs> what happened? They were looking for two different perspectives, weren't they? Amen. One of them was a kingdom perspective and I have given. And the other was, well, what do we have to do to get? Praise oh, God. Lord. But it was already given to them. Yeah. They didn't have to do anything to give to the land. Praise God. Yeah. It was already there. Glory yeah. to God. Because God does that. Now, you can't blame God for what you don't have. The reason why you don't have it is because of ignorance that you have. That's why that one scripture, I was talking to Luann about that one night, it says something about if you have something and you use it, you get more. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have anything yeah. and don't use it, you'll lose it. Right. And I said, how can you lose something if you don't have it? Have you ever thought about that scripture? If you have something and you use it, you won't lose it. But if you don't have anything and you don't use it, you'll lose it. What am I going to lose? Nothing that I had? No, you didn't have it because you didn't know. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Yeah. You didn't know you had it. Yeah. Then you didn't use it and you lost the darn thing, yeah. never knowing that you had it. Wow. And one day you're going to get up there and you're going to say, hey, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? He said, you had this, you had that, you yeah. had this, you had that. You had that. There's a scripture in the Bible, don't know where it is, where everybody's going to look at the devil one time and says, is that the yeah. thing? Yeah. Is that the thing? Yeah. It was to see that, that thing there was deceiving all oh, mankind. Oh, you got to be kidding me. What's the matter with these people? What is that? It's lack of knowledge, isn't it? Yeah. Lack of not knowing. So here I am my first years. I love God, and I'm praying for power, and I'm praying for God to do all these things that basically are in my life, and I'm supposed to be doing. And at that time, God was up there somewhere, and he just wouldn't do anything. I didn't know he was here. Right. Nobody told me he was here. I got for the first year, I went to church to the tabernacle to see him. Nobody told me. Where was he? He said, the tabernacle. <laughs> what are you going to do this morning? I'm going to church before work because i got to see God. So I go to the church and I sit down and I talk to God. He was in the box. Had some good talks. <laughs> Nobody ever told me he was here. Are you following me? Yeah. So I treat him like the big man upstairs, the guy over there, over here. Because nobody told me anything. Yeah. So there I was. I mean, I love God. I'm pressing towards God, but I ain't getting nowhere. Why? Because I'm not even going right or left. I'm going backwards half the time yeah. in my thinking of what's going on. So all these things were, were taking place. And, and, and I pray for somebody. Then when I start praying for somebody and they wouldn't get healed, they'd say, oh, well, God, you know, he, he just didn't want to heal that person. because that, 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 that. So I start going home and saying, why not? You said heal the sick. I put hands on them. I cursed that thing and rebuked it, and they're sick. Why is that? And a lot of times, how I many you know it may be something in their life? Yeah. Yeah. See, and if you don't understand that and it don't work, the devil will tell you why it didn't work. Oh, sure will. Because you're a powerless, mere, worthless Christian, yeah. that's why. Yeah. And then you pray for somebody who's deathly sick and they die. Boy, you'll really get a, you've got a whole book. Yeah. I'll tell you about that. <laughs> they still be alive. You wouldn't have prayed for them. You killed them. Yeah. My God, they were dying anyway. <laughs> you know what I bet mean? You start thinking about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, if I wouldn't have prayed for them, maybe they'd be alive. But then again, he told me to pray for him, but I prayed for him and didn't work. So I don't know what God's doing. It, it's not God. It is a connection miss someplace. Right, you yeah, see? Yeah. But when you turn on the light and it don't go on, you just don't say, well, praise God. Maybe it'll work tomorrow. Yeah. You find out what the problem is. Yeah. Light bulb switch, something. Right. And you fix the thing. Right. It's the same way with God. If he said it, it should work. And if it's not working, find out what's wrong. Maybe you're flipping the wrong switch, for God's sake. Maybe your light bulbs burn out. I don't know. But there's something there. So you've always got to go back and find out. And it... When something does work, you go for it. 
Yes. You know what I mean? You want, I want it to work, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to find out how to do it. I'm going to find out how to change it. I'm going to find out. Jesus said we're going to do greater work. Say greater work. Yes. That he did. Yes. So what's our problem? Okay, go to Ephesians chapter 3. God, I've got nowhere today. Um, this will be a 12-week teaching. Okay. We've got 12 pages, so one page a week. All right, Ephesians chapter 3, are you there? Yes. Yeah. All right, look at verse 20. Talking about God, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. This is a scripture that really opened my eyes to a lot of things. Notice, we all know God's able. How many know God's able? Yeah. You ask a Christian who got born again yesterday, is God able? They're going to say, yes, God is able. I mean, we've got that figured out. But notice what it says. He's able to do, but only exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or we think. So it's got something to do with our thought life, don't it? It's got something to do with the way we're thinking. So negative thinking is not going to help your power. Powerless attitude is not going to help you. Victim mentality is a killer. Pity party is a waste of time. All that stuff just zaps you of your power, man. It drains all the power that's on the inside of you. But notice, God can do anything. But he can only do according to what you ask or what you think. Can you heal the sick? I should say not. How many know you're not going to? Can you pray in tongues? Oh, I believe that's gibberish. Don't worry about it. You see, it's according to how we ask or think. So there's no problem in the source. How I many know God don't have a problem? Amen. There's no problem in the end result. The problem is somewhere between the end result and the source. Yeah. Now we had... Uh, a couple weeks ago, I got up in the kitchen, and I turned on the faucets, and a little bit of water came out, just a trickle. And I thought, dear Lord, what's going on? So I go to the bathroom, maybe the, the water's faucet. So I turn on the faucet, full blast. I go to the other one, full blast, go back to the kitchen, drip, 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 drip. I say, what the heck's going on here? Nothing's coming out. So I call a plumber friend of mine, and I called him, and he says, is, is the filter plugged? And I said, filter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, yeah, there's a filter on there. I said, there is. I said, where is it? He said, right on the end of your spigot, there's that little round thing. And if you twist that off, that's actually a filter, not nothing. I never knew this. So I twist that filter off. Now he says, put it in some NCL, CLD, CL, something, whatever. Get some of that and throw it in there and leave it in there for 12 hours. Pull it out. Screw that thing back on. I did turn the thing on. Man, now water came out of that thing. I tell you. No, no, it's, there was no problem in the source, no, mm -hmm. no problem in the end result, but there was a block. Mm -hmm. See, there's no no problem with the source. Come on, yeah. Yeah. No problem with the healing, the deliverance, the whatever, but there may be a problem in the filter. <laughs> so what the Holy Ghost does, he comes and he starts screwing off our filter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Puts it in whatever it is. F S F S H G Father Son and Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Gets it in there. That was good. That was good. Let's you clear your thought life. The same way if you ever washed your car and you got one of the long hoses and you turn the thing on and you go to the other end and get to your car and you're holding it and you're holding it and you're holding it. And you're holding it. Pretty soon you go back and look, and that thing's not. And you know why? They're kinking the hose. Yeah. Yeah. See, most of us have kinks in our hoses. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And the Holy Ghost comes along to straighten them kinks out. Yeah. And every time, and that's what revelation is. Yeah. Don't it feel like your your hose got unkinked when you get a revelation? Yeah. Go, oh my yeah. God! Yeah. Oh my God! Amen. Did yeah. you see the back yeah. there? Nobody else saw it but you. What happened? He unkinked you a little bit. He unkinks you a little bit more. And as long as you stay in the Word of God, praying in the Holy Ghost, doing the things, praise God, all at once the kinks start coming out. And then when you turn on the water, there's going to be a fly out the other end. Same way with the power of God. See, here's our issue right now. What do you believe? Do you believe what the Word says about you? Do you believe what people says about you? Do you believe what the church says about you? Do you believe what Christianity taught you? Christianity has just turned into a Christianism. Yeah. Really, they throw us in there with Buddhism and all them other isms, and we're not an ism at all. Praise Amen. God. We're a new kingdom that's coming here with new creation, spiritual beings. Praise God, with the power of God and anointing of God to demonstrate it. Glory to God. So it depends what we think. All right, one more. Go to Matthew chapter nine. Ma 
amazing how powerful just knowledge is in your life. Not only spiritual knowledge, but natural knowledge. Look, that plumber didn't even have to come to my house. I'm looking for him to come, adjust all the pipes, check everything out, make sure it's good. He just says, unscrew that thing, throw it in that stuff, put it back on. That's all there was to it, praise God. Hallelujah. All right, Matthew chapter 9. Look at verse 27. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. How many know that will get you thrown out of most churches? Right? Somebody comes to you for you, do you believe I'm able to do this? Most people say no. But apparently it was important to Jesus that they believe. And for Jesus to ask this question, it's pretty evident that he believed in himself and the power that he had. Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. So notice the faith of the other people were involved in what was taking place. But Jesus believed what he had in him and was trying to get them to believe what he had in him. Are you following me? It's the same way. If you can convince people of the power of God that God has given you on the inside, it'll be easier for them to receive their healing knowing that you've got something. You know, Many times they look up when you pray for them. Look over here. Look over there. No, there's power on the inside of us. So the more like the disciples, such as I have, I give thee, the more you can convince yourself of the power that you have on the inside of you, the more results you're going to see. And it's simply by agreeing. We do this in a lot of areas of our life, even our, even our character and conduct. If you claim to be something, you're going to be it. You understand? I'm an angry person. You are. Yes, I've always been angry my whole life. Well, you're going to stay an angry person until you understand you've been delivered from being an angry person and you're not a new creation. So while you're throwing a fit, you need to be saying, I never get angry. Praise God, I never get angry. That would help you more than saying, I'm getting madder than I ever have before. See? I'm an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic. Oh, yeah. I don't drink anymore, but I'm an alcoholic. Well, then you'll be drinking again. Just wait. Get an opportunity to do it. I'm a smoker. I'm a druggie. Well, you can be a druggie then. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Whatever you claim to be, you're claiming it. Yeah. And the devil more than happy to give it to you. He's delivering the package to you, and you're signing for it. And you're putting it in your pocket, and that's who you are. Yeah, I'm an angry man. I'm a lazy man. And all these things you claim. See, you don't claim these things unless Jesus said them. Amen. And he never said you're an angry man. He never said you're a druggie. He never said you're an alky. He never said any of those things. On, praise God. But we're convinced that we are, and since we are, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Amen. See, your soul's a powerful thing up here. Yeah. People say, well, my soul's saved. No, it's not. Your spirit's born again. Yeah, that's, another you you, that's another lie you've been taught. Your soul ain't saved. You've got to renew your soul. Yeah, and renew your right. mind. Your spirit was born again, praise yeah. God. And there's a difference between your spirit and your soul. Yeah, there, there your soul is. is your mind, your will, and emotions. So yeah. what am I doing? Every day I'm renewing my mind. What? Yeah. To the will of God. I'm not going to be in conformed to this world. I'm going to be transformed by the renewing yeah. of my mind. I'm going to learn the perfect will of God in my yeah. life. And I'm going to exhibit that will of God that's in my right. life, praise God. Hallelujah. And you walk into a church and you say, hi, everybody, I'm righteous and I'm holy and I'm full of the power of God and I am one anointed person and I heal the sick and I cast out devils. Amen. And you better do it. Yes. See? Because nobody wants to believe that. Nobody's been taught that. Nobody, nobody's been there. But, but God's changing things up to get us to a place where we understand what he did for us. And people say, well, you're just bragging. Hey, he did it. I was so excited when he just saved me. Then when I found out he made me righteous. Yeah. Then when I found out he anointed me. Yeah. Then when I found out he filled me with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I love him more. Yeah. 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 Woo. How did you get there? Well, I read scriptures every morning oh. and I prayed and I fasted and I did, 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 did. No, you didn't. Praise God. It was given to you freely the day that you got born again. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you got to give all the glory to him because you did nothing to do it Amen. except receive it and start claiming what belonged yeah. to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I jump up. Yeah.